All right, folks, welcome back to episode three of Breaking Sawgrass, where three players of different skill levels take on one of the toughest challenges in professional golf, the stadium course at TPC Sawgrass under championship conditions, conditions, conditions. We've made the turn and we're coming in hot into episode three, the penultimate episode. That means the second to last for those of you that didn't know what it meant before I read it. I'm one of them. If you're just joining us, you can look on the upper right side of the screen where a little menu is going to drop down where you can see the first two, the entirety of the front nine on our Random Golf Club Films channel. So we left the front nine with Joe Hooks, the star du jour at even par. Tom Coyne at plus 15. He's got three bogeys on the back nine in his bank. And Ben at plus 37. For those of you adding, that is a 73 on the front nine. That is what Joe is basically looking for on all 18 holes. Now, all due credit for Ben for coming out, counting every shot. It's a different game of golf. I've done a few of these break 90s myself. And I wouldn't call them the most fun I've ever had on the golf course, but it's definitely an experience that will make him a better player. And ultimately, that's what we're all looking for. So, without further ado, episode three of Breaking Sawgrass. Tenth hole is a par four, 424 yards, and I'm not even sure if the word narrow describes it. It's about as wide as a pencil, or maybe it's more like a Rorschach or a Jackson Pollock. This hole is a long mess. The green has tangled rough on the left and humps on the right, but my goodness, did Pete Dye create a beauty on this one. Joe Hooks first to play, less than driver. Look at that sexy little club. Don't you just love when a good golfer picks up a three wood? It could even be a five wood. He probably wants to turn this ball over a little bit. All right, no, it's a cut. Does that find the right side of the fairway? Looks like it made it kicked off into the rough there. Tom, hopefully gonna wrap this one up the left side of the fairway. Great tee shot to start the back nine, Tom. All right, Ben. New nine. You got this. Everything that happened on the front never happened. Let's just put together a couple bogeys. That's left. All right, let's just straighten this one out. It's at this point where I, I wish I could just, I wish I could just be there with Ben and just go to the range with him and just work on it. All right, we got the third one in play. It's not ideal, but Seems like that's just what you got to deal with here. Joe out of the pine straw, thinking about Augusta. How could you not with a four iron from 190? Does it get there? Just short. Sometimes the collars of these courses are softer than the greens themselves, so it's hard to get it up there. Time with a five iron. Short. Maybe they're playing into the wind. As we do, we look at the club after a Bunker. not so perfect shot. Iron's not strong today. It'll come. Get this up and down. Plenty more opportunities for long irons on this course, for sure. All right, Ben. Par from the box. Let's see it. All right. In play. 68 yards. Let's see it. To be fair, this is one of the hardest shots in golf. A mid-range wedge from soft sand. All right, Tom, just sat down. Now, this is where you really see. Look at this awkward lie. Chip's going the wrong way. How is he going to get the club under this ball? Unbelievable shot. All right, 
Will he make that putt to remain at even par? Tom just got to get it started. This is a quick one. Is it going to make it? Oh, great effort from Tom Coyne. Good five. Need five. This is where the this is where the score 90 really looms in your head. But then you break free and you start playing a different game. Joe just no. needs another roll. No way. Somebody got to check the dimples on that ball. Good putt, Joe. So so here's the situation we're dealing with. I mean, if you didn't see the last shot I just hit. I think we're on is it 13 Brady? 14. 14. Um so we are now over three times par. So I think at this point we pick it up. Um, as much as that goes against what we're trying to do, and maybe there's a massive asterisk on this, um, we're not going to hold up play. All right, looks like Ben's got a new mission, not to hold up play. Joe's at plus one, Tom at plus 16, and Ben at plus 47. All right, the par 5 11th, another masterpiece from Mr. Die. 558 yards. You have so many options. You could literally consult a magic eight ball for this one and still be confused. This hole goes right. It goes left. It goes up. It goes down. Welcome to the 11th hole, folks. A crystal clear day to play sawgrass for these three. Joe hooks on the tee again. Maybe they just let him tee off first by default. He's going to work this ball up the bunker on the left side of the fairway. Beautiful drive. I don't know about you guys, but watching this makes me want to go out and play golf big time. All right, Tom needs to par out from here. Shoot 90. Is that coming back? Well... We know one thing from watching Tom Coyne's front nine. He's a grinder, and golf loves a grinder. Yeah. I like that we can make a new show called Tom's Quips from the Tips. I've had more fun doing other things, you know? Root canals, colonoscopies, stuff like that. All right, Ben Goodley on the tee. Again, we just want one good hole to write home about. Sit. Sit there. I didn't want to pick up on 10, but I don't want to hold the group up and just had, had to make the decision. I mean, I pick up at home, so I hate to pick up because of what we're trying to do, but I don't think that that's going to be the, the decision maker of whether or not I break 100 or not. <laughs> I'm on sawgrass on the 11th hole at the moment, actually. So this is great. Yeah. All right. I will, I will. Okay. Thank you, Melanie. So great. Talk soon. Smooth swing on the way from Tom. Six iron from the pine straw. Sorry, I had to take that. That was the Golf Writers Association. And I'm not allowed to tell everybody that I just won feature story, best feature story of 2020. Yeah. The lucky ones, the one for, that we're talking about there. Yeah, so, hey, that lifts up my round. Oh, wait, Melanie, I swear I didn't tell anybody. And this will not air until well after the press release is out. But that does lift the spirits. Um, I've never won uh, an award for a story from the Golf Writers Association. I've gotten honorable mention a couple times. Um, so to win best feature of the year is, um, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, so, all right, cool. Now let's just have fun, shoot, shoot 110, who cares? <laughs> I'm a writer, not a golfer. <laughs> Joe with the two iron on the way. I would have to think he's going for it. Not too bad. Mm. That is. Oh. In the water, first ball Joe's lost. There will be a few beers and a good meal after this. 
Ben here with a strong five iron. Does it cover? That'll play. Looks good. What was that? Five iron. Very exciting news from Tom about the win. Tom wrote an article for one of my favorite golf magazines yeah. called The Golfer's Journal. That's and it's so about bad. a sober golf league that he's in. Myself as a sober individual as well, 20 years. That's one of the cool things that Tom and I found out after playing our first round together. At uh, We played Sleepy Hollow with one of his friends. And I said, how did you two meet? And he said, yeah, we're both sober. I said, me too. That's three out of four. We looked at the fourth and said, put that drink down, buddy. Um, now, all love for, for every, all types of lives. But, um, but anyway, big congrats, Tom Coyne. That <laughs> felt pretty good. C'est la vie, mon ami. Joe taking advantage of the club cleaner, like a sushi chef, just cleaning off those blades. 90 yards, 60 degree. Lobwich on the way, I'll bet this is about 80% for him. Just short, does it kick forward? All right, I'll put every penny I have in my crypto wallet that he's gonna drain this one. In between clubs, you know, just like, wasn't feeling the shot I had, the correct shot that I had to hit. I mean, if I hit it, Full. I mean, that thing is coming in so flat that it goes way through the back of the green, but I'd rather do that than hit it in the water. But it's all good. No putting for cars. So I needed to shoot 38 on this side, a bogey 10. I'm going to do a big number here. So we're going to change the format and we're going to call this Breaking 100 at Sawgrass. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Good thinking, Tom. Change the story. As a writer, he knows that he can change the narrative whenever he wants. Golf clap to Tom. Nip it. Oh, right into the hole. Oh. All right. All right. So if Tom's breaking 100, what's Ben breaking? Either way, we're breaking something. That ball did not get off at the right stop. Oh, there you go. Comebacker for quad. Tom onto the 12th. All right, Joe. I've wagered all the money in my crypto wallet on this putt. You better drain it. Oh, shit. That's a big problem. just needs to find that hole. All right, triple bogey, not bad, Ben. Moving on to the 12th. Shockers alike, here we go. Plus 19 for Tom, plus 50 for Ben. And Joe, the surprise of the day here, plus two. He needs to come in at even. And that includes the par five 16th, the island hole 17th, and the tricky long par 4 18th. But that's all in the next and final episode. For now, we're dealing with the 12th hole, a shorty, a little shorty, par 4, 358 yards. Very similar to the fourth hole, needs a pair of precise shots. A hill left of the landing area covered with grass hollows and deep rough can block you from the flagstick. Most second shots are inside 100 yards, making for dead aim approaches. Green was resurfaced in 2006 and raised up, and the right side was expanded to allow for more hole locations. We're driver here. I like it. Ben, just bring out the big dog. I know where you're aimed. Please be aimed left. Oh, goodness. That's just the meme of the day. Set up for the cut, hit a straight ball. Oh, I like it. He doesn't care. I got birdies. I'm overdue for birdies, bro. You know, so I'm, I'm just chilling. I'm trying to like gain some energy here, but I don't have a cart girl, no food. Threw up all my energy, so gotta figure, gotta figure it out. Got a lot of problems with the logistics of the course, but he doesn't have a problem with the layout. My guy's got the game for it. All we need is one or two birdies coming in to comfortably get inside 75 and that's the drive for it 
coming right back onto the fairway like a 747 in an asphalt desert basin. Oh. Whatever. The ball, Joe. Thanks. Tom may like blocked fonts, but he does not like blocked tee shots, nor do any of us. I'm just fine up here, I'd say. Stayed away from the bad stuff. Hidden to some other bad stuff, but if I'm not right behind this tree, what do you think, Bill? I think you can have a look. That's right. So we just teed off on 12. We got 300 on the on the uh, on the placard, a 304-yard par four. So for me, right now, the game plan was just hit driver, get down there, and figure it out. Probably could have hit three wood. That would have put me probably 80 yards out. But just going driver, see what's out there, and pretty wide open fairway, so I wasn't worried. The driver's all over the place, so there wasn't any fear with the driver on this, just because with there being so much space, you can even miss wide left over here where I am. You've got a bunker that'll stop your ball from going in the water. You got some decent rough that'll stop your ball. The only issue now with me going up the left. I now have to carry water 90 to get to the to the green. So that should be interesting to see, but we are going to see how it plays out. It's good to hear Ben talking about his game. He knows what's up and here we go. 95 yards pitching wedge. This should be more than enough club. Great shot. Wouldn't you love to see him just drop a bird on him with his last name being Goodly? Can you just say be Goodly? Tom here in the shadows. What kind of smooth oh, swing is that, my friends? That is a that is a gap wedge from 84 yards. Yeah, felt good. Right off the middle. Should have had a little little checky check check. You know. Got to look at birdie. This might be my first birdie putt. This is where it all turns around, baby. Said every golfer and gambler ever. Joe Hooks just with a little flip chip up here onto the green. Birds chirping. Beautiful day out here at this bucket list golf course. All right. From Midtown, 55 feet, 55th Street and Broadway. Joe Hooks is going to go dancing tonight if he drains this. Ooh, he took the express train. He's going to have to get out and take one stop back. Oh, Tom deserves a bird here. Come on, does he have the right read? A little downhill. Well, I tell you what, after a round where every shot is on camera and you're playing from an unfamiliar tee box on a course that has fangs, a tap in par feels like an eagle. Ben, for birdie, you said it couldn't happen. I'm not clear if the caddy is giving Ben reads, but that that was just that was just a misread. You can see the replays of the years past at the players on the TV. Joe for par. I will double down on my crypto bet here. Wow. Oh no. On the low side. Bogey, bogey. Start on the back nine. Can Ben convert? Wow. If that was match play, Ben won that hole. Take that one home and frame it, Mr. Goodley. That's what we live for doesn't matter what you call it we live for that can we get an instant replay on the celebration there yeah i just love to take a look at that maybe we can put it in slow-mo you say you can tell a lot about a person about how they celebrate on the golf course and i know from this celebration that ben is my guy all right ben still at plus 50 after a par on the 12th tom also makes part is to remain at plus 19 and joe bogeys every hole on the back so far to go plus three he needs to par out and birdie to beat 75. This is where you start wondering, you know, the long walk, the hot sun, new course, every shot on camera. This is where the mind starts to play with you. All right, 13th hole, folks. You know what that means when you see that word par three up there. Ace cam is live. Second shortest par three on the course, 156 today. And again, these players are playing every tee box all the way back. This is even a little bit longer than the course played during some of the rounds at the players. 
And if you look closely, this hole and green may remind you of the 16th hole at Augusta, where a ridge on the green feeds the ball down toward the water. It's a three-tier green and it demands a precise tee shot, kind of like what you want from your dentist. And I got the feel like someone's just gonna dunk it, or at least make it two, or at least make a par. All right, that pin is front left in the Top Gun quoted danger zone. Well, you don't want to go left, so you go right. But it's dry. It is. The water doesn't exist, though. Nothing like teeing off with a Rolex sign right behind you. Come on, Ben, stuff this one. That looks oh, good. Oh, no, is it heavy? Look at that. You dry. you dry too? Yep. That ball had a thinly sliced piece of gouda between it and a drop. All right, Joe. 13th hole. I got to imagine this guy's looking for the hole like a drunk guy's looking for a bar. We need you to make a hole in one like the raccoon in my backyard needs me to not lock my trash can. Shout out to Elliot for making these shot tracers by oh, hand. You know? All right, let's check in with the players and see how they're feeling. So my score, I turned it 51. 10, I made an awesome five. 11, uh, a really um, crafty nine. 12, strong par. So that puts me at, like, 19 over, something like that. Okay, so I've got a little work to do. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm gonna tell it like it is. I need a chip in here. And a few more times, maybe an ace. I'm not out of it though. I'm not giving up. Swing's starting to feel good. This is so cool. I mean, to be out here playing from, you know, where the divots where the pros were yesterday um, and making one even bigger than any of the divots they made. I feel good about that, um, that I was able to pull that off. Um, it's just awesome. You know, we watched this happen yesterday and how hard it looked. And then to come out here and prove it, it's really, really hard. How many times have you seen this tournament on TV? Since I was a wee child, so since I'm 29, uh, I've seen it like 27 times. Yeah. Throwing up is like catching up to me, but I, I am mean, not just using it as an excuse. Trust me, I don't feel this. I don't feel like I did on one. I'm not even close. What's your score looking? Brutal. Brutal. I'm three over. I mean, if I get myself in position, you know, maybe I'll get a couple putts to fall, but I hit the shots. We're good. We're having a good time. That, that's the name of the game is in, enjoy the round of golf. So we parred the last hole. So we're feeling good. We're going, yeah, we we're going to get it up and down here. We're going to par this hole. We're going to par the next one. We're going to par the next one. Just a little bit of pace. Close to or just left of that number 14 going over the hill. Right. So it's going to stretch out. And it's kind of in a good spot where if it gets a little left, kind of just stays there. Just tumble it over that. All right, Tom, just looking to sort of a linksy play here, keep it low. Hard to hit that shot with force with the water behind. Dude, no, dude, you can't stop. <laughs> You're on the crest. I have Jack. I have Jack. <laughs> dude, Man, that's so perfect. You know, watching this definitely makes you think about the ways that you can react to good shots and bad shots. And I hope that by watching this, you realize that, you know, with the exception of Joe, who's a professional, both Ben and Tom don't really play like this. Like they play to have fun. They play to go for a walk. And I hope that you watching it realize that there are a lot of different ways to go out there and play. It's certainly been one of the great teachings that golf has given me in my life, which is that I get to choose how I react. And that's the, you know, epitome of one of random golf clubs rules rule 17b is that one must laugh at the bad shots under the usga the rule is you must play the ball as it lies but we took that and we made our own little rule which says laugh at the bad shots and you see even the pros do it too all right joe for his birdie from downtown it looks like it's got the speed okay it'll settle down there and i'll have a tap in bar that's some incredible speed especially with the water down there all right, Ben told us he's going to make this putt a hundred feet putt from a hundred feet. That's from a different county. I wonder if Ben thinks about the apron being a chef. Does he, does he feel any familiarity with the apron? This is a back apron too. It's not. I didn't know they put aprons on the back. Maybe we call that a collection area. 
short game is truly tested around this course. Tom with a good putt, good speed. It's just going to roll out a little below the hole. All right, comebacker for bogey. This is one of these tough par threes where if you're not in position, if you're on the wrong side of the green, it is very hard to find the hole in two putts. What a shot there with the flowers behind. Joe for par, all right. All right, the scorecard says it all. We're going to head into 14 now, the 481-yard 14th hole. Second hardest hole on the course, thanks in part to 15 yards added about two years ago, but also to a second string of mounds added along the right side of the landing area, now dotted with grass clumps. That and the waste bunker on the left make for one of the toughest drives on the course. The green is very large by stadium course standards and has plenty of slope. The acronym for that is POS. This is the beginning of where things get interesting on Sunday, and in this case, on Monday. Let's see where these gentlemen head up with their tee shots. Tom just needs to get through it. But I guess being on the right side is better than the left on this hole. We need to get Joe on the birdie train here. drive, Ben. Look at that. Would you just look at that? He found it. Look at it. My head is starting to drift off to 17, even though we're only on 14. But it's one of those things, like, it's kind of scary as that hole is, or however you feel about it. Yeah, it can certainly ruin your round, but it also can redeem your round. Like, I'm at a place where, right now, score-wise, eh, not putting this one on the on the old wall, but hit 17, make a putt. You know, it's the greatest round of my life. So, just hope. All right, where the fuck's my ball? I felt amazing. I mean, that that's the most frustrating thing for me. Um, I know a lot of like my friends, like us average, say weekend weekend hacks, is that every once in a while you flash greatness relative greatness and it frustrates you because it's just like why can't i do this repeatedly that's the basic gist of it it's just like appreciating the good shots and laughing at and forgetting the bad shots because if i think if i remember all the bad shots and, and think about those too much i never play golf again there you go that's rule 17b right there from ben he gets it all right tom just off the fairway here from 160. Got a seven iron in hand. That folks there, we didn't get a detail of that, but this rough is very, very deep and thick. It's overseeded, so it's intense. It's gonna be a good story because I'm gonna get back to even. Watch. Wow, Joe just doubling down on the match between himself and Mr. Pete Dye's masterpiece of horrors here. From just off the fairway, he's got a pitching wedge from 156. You have to think he's got a good lie here. I mean, that ball is very much below his feet. Asking for it to get left. Tom from the bunker. Looks like it's just going to curl down there onto the edge of the green. Uh, had one go in the water, so rather than drop on the bank and have a tree a mile line. I went back behind the bunker and we're gonna drop one a little further back. That way we've got a clearer shot in. I think that's legal, Ben. I don't really know, but either way, seven iron from 130. It may look pretty bad right now, but all glory can be returned on one hole. 
We all know the hole. I don't need to say what number. But all these eights and nines and twelves and pick up after 14, it can all be forgotten if we if we hit the big the big island. Big island green. It's not that big, but if we hit that, maybe par it, all can be forgotten. All is well. We can leave with our head held high, which we'll leave with our head held high regardless. And uh, we can at least tell good stories about that. Sound words from Ben. I love that. He knows where the mission is. And the mission is in the next episode. 17 at Sawgrass. All right, Joe for birdie from just off the green. He had a good line, just needed a little more pace. A nice one from Tom, right in the center of the cup. Joe hooks four par to remain at three over. And then he has some work to do on the final four holes as we go through the stretch. I don't know about y'all, but I am very excited to see them play 16, 17, and 18. Great butt, Joe. anyone out there wants to get Ben a Christmas gift, I'm going to wager that it's a putting aid. I swear, if he just cleaned up his putting, he'd be 15 strokes under. But nobody wants to practice putting, let's be honest. All right, the final putt of this episode. All right, that leads us to the end of the third episode of Breaking Sawgrass with Tom at plus 23, now with a new mission of trying to break 100. Reasonably, I have done that before. Ben at plus 56, he's just trying to hit the green on 17, so we'll see him in three holes. Joe at plus three, he is on the cut line, so to speak, and he's trying to get back to even a monster goal for a monster player. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you on the final episode of Breaking Sawgrass, where you'll find out who breaks sawgrass and who gets broken.